Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, which is Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boylow, and in this unit, we turn our attention to the topic of project profiling and the use of Agile as we prepare to complete our first sprint. So let's get started. Here's our agenda for this module. We have a fair amount of material to cover, including a quick review of project life cycles, a detailed look at project sprints, sprint alignment with the project management process groups and PMI, a look at project profiling in Agile, building a project profile in our first sprint, the role of user stories in project profile, and next steps. We begin with a quick review of project life cycles. A project life cycle represents the series of phases that a project goes through from the start of the project to its completion. This framework applies to all projects, regardless of scope or life cycle type. In general, project life cycles can be predictive or adaptive. Predictive life cycles are often referred to as waterfall life cycles, as the project's scope, time, and cost are identified and fixed at the project outset. Work then moves linearly from one project phase to the next. Adaptive life cycles, on the other hand, are agile or change-driven, using iterative development cycles with incremental delivery of product functionality. PMI identifies five project management process groups that should be present in every phase of a project, namely initiating, planning, executing, monitoring and controlling, and closing. It is very important to keep in mind that the process groups do not represent project lifecycle phases in Agile project development. Furthermore, all of the process groups are represented in each iterative development cycle when working in adaptive project life cycles. An illustration of this is provided in the diagram showing a single development cycle in a project that encompasses all five of the process groups. As we discussed in the last module, when we talked about the Agile Scrum framework, a life cycle phase is defined as a sprint. During a sprint, you conduct constant inspections to assess progress toward the sprint goal and consequentially toward the release goal. Let's take a moment to review project sprints. Scrum sprints are used in Agile project management to model adaptive, iterative, and incremental design thinking. This diagram emphasizes incremental product, project delivery as a key tenet of Agile project management. As we discussed in the presentations and assigned readings in the last module, sprints represent the work that is done in Agile project life cycles via the sprint events, which include sprint planning, daily scrum meetings, sprint review, and sprint retrospective. In addition, sprints facilitate management and administration of two key project artifacts, namely the product backlog and the sprint backlog. Recall that the product backlog encompasses the complete set of user requirements included in the project charter, which are presented as user stories. The sprint backlog is the set of product backlog items that have been selected for the sprint, along with a plan for delivering the product increment in order to meet the sprint goal. The increment produced is the sum of the product backlog items completed during the sprint, building on the value of increments produced in all of the previous sprints. Here's an alternative view of a project sprint focusing on the iterative and adaptive nature of Agile project life cycles. The sprint, as well as the processes within it, repeats over and over for each project life cycle phase. The Scrum framework relies on the tenets of inspection and adaptation applied on a daily basis throughout the project life cycle. Specifically, during a sprint, we conduct constant inspections to assess progress toward the sprint goal and, consequentially, toward the release goal. We have a daily scrum meeting to organize the work by viewing what the team completed yesterday and what it will work on today. In this way, 
the sprint team reassesses its progress toward the sprint goal each day. And at the end of the sprint, we hold a retrospective meeting to assess performance and plan necessary adaptations to the product log backlog. Whereas I don't want to spend a great deal of time on this slide, it is instructive to note that each of the five PMI process groups are aligned with the sprint events, which occur during each iteration of the product project lifecycle. Project profiling in Agile begins with the project charter to identify the project vision and purpose. Project profiling and chartering also applies to building Agile project teams. This includes establishing team values, such as maintaining a sustainable pace, identification of team member roles, and prioritization of tasks. Working agreements to cover expectations for the sprint events and artifacts, including sprint planning, reviews, retrospectives, daily scrums, backlog preparation and refinement, and criteria used to determine when an increment is done. Ground rules covering what, when, where, and how the team will work together in terms of communications channels, methods and tools, workflows, and handling product challenges, and group norms for completing assignments, being available for meetings, and respect for each other's time. All of this information is covered in detail in Chapter 5 of the Agile Practice Guide, along with some additional resources. Project profiling also represents our first project lifecycle phase using Agile project management. This is the work to be done in our first project sprint. Now, most project management texts, including the one used in this class, refer to this as the project initiation phase. I avoid using this terminology here because a common mistake made by novice project managers attempting to apply the PM standards is that they confuse the project profiling lifecycle phase with the PMI initiating process group. As I shared with you in a previous slide, all five of the project management process groups from PMI appear in each project lifecycle phase or sprint. A project charter is an output of the project profile profiling lifecycle phase as an initial scope of work. So that's our increment. A well-crafted project profile also helps when designing the project management plan and schedule. For our purposes, project profile profiling represents our starting point, providing a snapshot of the project scope and requirements before work actually begins. In addition, it provides us with the initial set of requirements for the product backlog. Project profiles identify a set of attributes to determine what kind of resources will be needed in order to support the project. These include budget, size, complexity, timing, and technologies needed, all for inclusion in the project charter. Attributes may also be weighted to reflect the degree of importance or criticality to the overall project outcome. We need to determine whether the project outcome is a product, service, or other result. So in other words, why are we doing this? Who are the key stakeholders? Who is directly affected by the project? And how? In other words, who's our target audience? Applying project profiling to our first sprint provides the initial product backlog and goal for the sprint. The sprint increment or output is a set of requirements for the ebook and information needed to complete the project charter. The third piece of project profiling that I want to talk about in this presentation is user stories. User stories are very important in Agile project life cycles as they provide the functional user requirements, as well as a description of the user experience for the product, service, or other result. Specific to Scrum, User stories, along with non-functional user requirements, constitute the product backlog. In general, a functional requirement describes what a project should do, while non-functional requirements place constraints on how the product will do so. Our focus in the project profiling sprint and in the project charter 
will be primarily on functional user requirements. That said, a user story is a brief description of deliverable, of deliverable value for a specific user or user persona. It is a promise for a conversation to clarify details by delivering a complete set of user requirements. In software development, a user story is referred to as a use case scenario. We create user stories using a template to specify the who, what, and why for a single functional user requirement in narrative form. So as a type of user or the who, I want to deliver what capability, what feature, so that a particular benefit is realized or why. I've added a page to the Scrum Resources module that includes examples of user stories for different types of products, services, and other results. So you'll, so you'll want to be sure to take a look at that. User story mapping is a visual practice for organizing work into a useful model to help understand the set of high value features to be created over time, identify omissions in the backlog, and effectively plan releases that deliver value to the users. In Agile, we refer to this as the Scrum Board. Although we can organize user stories using paper cards, in this class we will use digital cards to manage our product and sprint backlogs in Trello. More information about this is provided in the Scrum Resources module for the course site as well as discussed in the previous module. As we approach the end of this presentation, please make sure that you review all course materials for Module 3, including all content, activities, and assignments. Please note there are two assignments due at the end of this module. Working your group, you'll complete the project profiling sprint. And individually, I'm asking you to complete and submit the project charter assignment and there will be instructions on how to do so. And then lastly, complete all associated readings for Module 4 that are listed in the course syllabus schedule to prepare for the next project iteration. That brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boylo, wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience. I'll see you online and in our virtual classroom.